In this video I'm going to be fitting the handmade kitchen cabinets which I made in a previous video into our utility room. So first I needed to strip out all of the stuff that is going to be in the way, move a few things around, do a bit of cleaning and then I can finally demolish this ugly cabinet which I've really been looking forward to for a long time. With all of that out of the way, I realized that these pipes down here might create a few issues when it comes to installing the cabinet that I built for this area in the corner. But I thought I'd start with the easier to fit units first, just so that I can make a bit of progress. Right, so the first minor problem is that where the washing machine is plumbed in is gonna sit behind the cabinet. So to get around that, I think I'm going to have to cut a hole in the back of the cabinet. Before I do that though, I'm first going to set up a laser level so that I can get all of the cabinets sitting at the height that I want them at. I also need to get the cabinets sitting level by adjusting the height of the legs. And I want that laser level to just be touching the top of each cabinet all the way across as you can see here. I then measured the position of the water supply for the washing machine and drilled a 75mm hole. Although later on I came back and elongated that just to make sure that there was enough space to get a hand in there. Okay, so those two cabinets are in. Everything's sitting really nice and level. Now it's on to the third base unit and this one's gonna be really tricky. Those pipes at the bottom, these ones here, I can cut out first. The back of my cabinets over here are about 105 mil from the wall, which means that this pipe is definitely gonna be in the way of my back panel. I clamped a long level to the next cabinet along so that I can get the cabinet up to the same height. Right, so I've got that sitting at exactly the same level. I guess now I can look down the back here and just make a couple of pencil marks at the height where I need the cutouts to be. And then when I look at this end, it looks like I'll be able to keep this side panel intact. So I'm just gonna make a mark roughly there and then started marking out. And my main concern here was that I would be taking away some of the structural rigidity of the unit with having to cut so much material away. It looks like it's gonna clear at the top, but there's one more copper pipe down here that I missed. The multi-tool came in really useful on quite a few occasions on this project. So we've got that little lot in now, and I think what I'm gonna do at the back is just hold my pencil as straight to this pipe as I can get it, and scribe a mark onto the back panel. And then right at the bottom, I'm gonna need a cut out for that pipe as well. So this is how it turned out. One other thing I need to sort out later is that there's an underfloor vent down here and it's really important not to block that so I'll come back to that later in the project. I also needed a small cutout in the shelf and all looking good so far. Next I'm going to fit the wall unit and I want that to sit 400 millimeters above the worktop. This is going to be hung via a French cleat, so I need to figure out the distance from the bottom of the unit to the top of the cleat, and then mark that out onto the wall. And I also used the laser to get the end of the wall unit level with the end of the base unit beneath. When I hang things like this, I like to get a fixing in the center so that I can pivot just to level things up. And then while it's held there, I can mark up the remaining holes, ready to drill those out. And then I can check that the microwave fits, and that looks good. Okay, time to fit my end panels now. And the first thing I wanna do is just make sure that the floor is actually level, because often it isn't. And to do that, I'm just gonna check the distance at the front, 30 millimeters here, 
28 millimeters there. And I need to fit this so that there's a nice consistent 18 millimeter gap at both the top and the bottom so that when the doors are fitted, everything should be nice and true. Typically, I'd want to remove some from the bottom at this corner just to skew the panel over so that the distance at the front is nice and even. But because the distance is only two millimeters different, I'm actually not going to bother because there's going to be plenty of adjustment in these doors anyway to true everything up. So I'm actually just gonna scribe the top and the back of this panel. So I've got my end panel clamped in place and I've got a compass here which I'm going to use to scribe the shape of the wall onto the back of this end panel. So you can see I made a pencil mark to indicate how much material needs removing to get the front of the panel protruding by 18 millimeters. And after scribing and cutting this, I'll end up with a good fit to the wall. So you can see how the wall juts out right at the bottom down here. Some people like to bevel their blade slightly to get an even tighter fit to the wall, but I didn't bother because I'm going to be caulking any gaps later on anyway. The end panels got secured with some screws through from the inside, and I also need to secure the units to the wall using some of these L brackets. Fortunately, I had a few of these laying around the workshop. And this impact driver attachment for tight spaces was another tool that came in really useful on this project, as you can see here. A lot of the other end panels needed cutouts to fit around pipes on the wall. And I don't need to be so precise when fitting these end panels, as the back edges of these are never going to be seen once the rest of the kitchen is fitted. There were five of the end panels to fit to the base units in total. Right, so all five end panels are in now. And with this unit on the end, I've got two sides of it fitted to the wall, just because it's on the end, so it's the most vulnerable. And uh, this one, I haven't got any fixings in because there's nowhere really to secure it to. So I'm thinking what I'll do is just put in a wooden block at the back here and secure that through the back panel, just to make sure it can't move. Those are the dimensions of the block that I need so that I can go and cut that in the workshop. And then over here, this one's fitted to the wall as well. And now I just need to figure out what to do in this gap here. This is the infill piece and I cut this to fit around these copper pipes and fit nice and tight to the wall. It got secured with screws too and I also later added another L bracket just to support it at the top. And then I added a little return at the front which the plinths can later butt up against. Since this piece is so low to the floor, I just screwed it in place and then I can fill and paint these screw heads to hide them. Time to fit the doors now and while the cabinet part of the hinge can be easily separated from the door part of the hinge, I find it easier just to hold the door in place right where I want it, mark up the holes and then drill them out. These hinges are fully adjustable, up, down, left, right, in and out, so once they're screwed in place, I can just make small adjustments to get the gaps nice and consistent around the door, and make sure that the door isn't rubbing on the end panels when opening and closing. These are soft close hinges too, inexpensive and decent quality. I'll leave links to the ones I used in the description box below. A while back a retired kitchen fitter gave me loads of kitchen handles and I had a look through what I had and these ones were the ones that I liked the most and fortunately my wife agreed. In the past I've made a simple jig to position the handles but with only five of these to fit I figured it'd be just as quick just to mark them out and fit them. Okay, so all of my handles are on now. Uh, three things to talk about. Firstly, I decided to mirror these doors so that they open either side of the washing machine. I just thought that would look better if they were symmetrical. Same applies to this top cabinet with them both opening mirrored to the center. On the base units, I positioned the handles so that the first hole was eight centimeters down and four centimeters in. And for the wall cabinets, I did eight centimeters up and four centimeters in. However, when it came to doing this smaller door, eight centimeters up just didn't look right. So I actually did four centimeters up and four centimeters in. I also made a really stupid mistake. I drilled out this handle on this side incorrectly first. So now I've got some holes to fill and paint. 
These are the plinths I made and you'll see here I primed and painted the bottom edges just to protect them from moisture but I'm also going to drill some pilot holes and add a couple of small screws just to act as feet to lift the plinths off the floor by a few millimetres. This way when the floor gets mopped we don't need to worry so much about the MDF swelling. I mark up where the centre of the legs are and these clips came in the box with the legs, I'll leave a link to those in the description box too. The wall unit is going to get end panels fitted too, which also gets scribed to the wall for a nice tight fit. And you'll see I left an overhang on these panels at the top and the bottom. And that's because I had already laminated some MDF together to make a cornice at the top and a pelmet at the bottom. I kept these square and really simple as we prefer our kitchen cabinets to look minimal in terms of design. And this is how it looked once framed out. Finally, a few finishing touches, primer and paint touch-ups. A bit of decorator's caulk to fill any gaps which will get painted in once dry. I also chased out the walls ready for some new electrical sockets to be installed by our electrician. I used a multi-tool with a diamond blade and then a combing chisel for that. It worked out really well and it was pretty easy. Once those were installed, this is how it ended up. A new double socket and then inside the cabinet a single socket for our microwave. I also siliconed all the bottom of the end panels to protect them from moisture, although I didn't silicon the plinths as I want to ensure that they are removable in future just for general maintenance and also ready for when we fit new flooring to this room. And earlier I mentioned that floor vent which sits behind that cabinet in the corner, so for that I drilled a 67mm hole and installed one of these plastic soffit vents just to maintain good ventilation. So that's the kitchen installed and to be honest it was really enjoyable work, uh, far more enjoyable than actually making the carcasses, which soon got quite repetitive, particularly with all of the painting. I do also want to install some new flooring because we've got this weird part over here and then at the other end another weird part over here, but that's all a job for another day when we've got a bit more money to spend. Next it's going to be on to making the worktops which is something I'm really excited about because I've got a good plan for that I think and also we're going to need a backsplash along this back wall. So stay tuned for more coming soon, thanks for watching. Mm -hmm.